Sorry. And we are here. Yes. Here. Episode 28 of the comic book crowd. Now, when I put that intro together, I put a couple extra seconds at the end and I always forget about that. So I'm ready to go. <laughs> but I want to welcome everybody here in the chat and especially my cohorts in the comic book crowd. Today we have Alan from Climbing Comics. Alan, how you doing tonight? Good, good. Happy to be here. It's been a while. Yeah, and we have Professor Chuck Hensy here. How you doing, Prof? I'm doing great. Doing great. And down below, right with the arrow, <laughs> we have from the uh, frozen tundra of the north, super north sweater, super north. <laughs> we have the one, the only Mark Andrews. Mark, how are you tonight? I am well. Thanks for having me. Oh, there you go. It's now, you can't go wrong with somebody that has a comic book crowd mug. That's all I got to say. And, of course, the one, the only, my bestie, Mark Woods of Mark Woods Comics. You got <laughs> to check out that store, the Mark Woods Comics store. <laughs> the Mark Woods Comics? Is that a thing? How you doing, I don't know Mark? what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, it's what we said before. Before we started, you know, Matt was talking about the fact that he's going to be talking about we're talking about the market tonight, right? That he's uh, sold some comics. And I said the problem with not getting the best price possible was that he's not selling them to Mark Andrews. And Matt, being so prescient about things, said, yes, but he pays in Canadian dollars. And we all understand that. Too. Oh, okay. and so it begins. And so, like it begins. And so, it <laughs> so it begins. It doesn't even count. It's like Monopoly money. Yeah, it's like Monopoly money. Well, let's see who's joined us today. And of course, we have Tina. Tina, thank you. Yes, we're here now. Hey, Tina. And hope the topic is good because these guys are ready. These guys are ready to talk about the market, give you guys hints, you know, tell you where you can get really good deals. Not. But anyway. So From we Matt Woods. <laughs> We have Trev. <laughs> hey, Trev, my friend. How are you? Trev just recently had his birthday. I was on his show for his birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Trev. Belatedly. Happy birthday. But Trev is in his 40s, which causes today. me no, it, it just caused me so much pain, you know, that somebody is that young. But I'm not even talking about Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry the Jitterbug. Jerry, Jerry. Uh, the guy is just fantastic. If you're not watching Jerry to see how he preserves comic books. I mean, I do a little bit of that Man. work, just, you know, very, very light type of work, but I've already learned some stuff from him that I'm using, you know, to try to make my comics look a little bit nicer and better before I send them to CGC. You can't, you got to check out Jerry. Fantastic. That X-Men series he has. Isn't that Man. fantastic? Mm, and awesome. I told him that's the only, he's the only X-Men comic of the first 50 I don't have, Jerry. <laughs> and did. Wait a second, didn't I buy you X Men number one one day? You did, you did. I'm sorry, but it was a facsimile. Oh, that's right. That's right. so. I do have it. That's true. So I should say something. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Who else do we have here? Let's see who else has joined us tonight. Ah, who's that? Oh, that's Chuck Henze and his channel. Yes, great Hello. name from the north as well. Steve White, the Mad GI Joe Man. Those G.I. Joe things, for a while when I was watching his G.I. Joe videos, I was saying, yeah, maybe I should buy some G.I. Joe comics. And then I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and said, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> it's that Again boy. from the north, we've got Wellbore. Hey, Brad. Uh, yeah, you had a great photograph on uh, Instagram. You know, it's, it's really great, really great. All right, who else? Do we have anybody else that's joined us so far? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Ah, Digger Jim. How you doing, Digger? Hey, Digger. Right. Now that's something. When he goes out digging, when I was a kid, I saw some videos on that and it was always something that intrigued me. So, uh, I mean, it, I just, I'm living vicariously, vicariously through you, Jim. I just love that type of stuff going around. 
the stuff that he finds is really cool sometimes. Mm -hmm. I got to reach out to Jim. I'm <laughs> getting ready to go metal detecting at an old mansion that got torn down in the mid 1800s. Wow. And I, I don't care if I just get a belt buckle. I'm yeah. really excited because people don't even know that there was even like buildings back in the woods where I'm going. So I don't yeah. think anyone's ever taken a metal detector to it. I'm pretty stoked. That's very cool. You're going to have to cool. let us know what happens. Seth Eleven, good to see you tonight. Thank you for stopping by. And let's see if we got any more that we missed. Comic Cap Collections, collectibles. <laughs> How you doing? I love that uh, Captain America Com Cap Collector thing. I like that. Uh, who else? Who else? Did it, Jim. A lot of conversation going, which we like to see. Uh, let's see. Gary B. Hey, Gary. Gary. I was out with the wife last night. We went out to see a play and have some dinner. You know, so I, I gotta, I, I've gotta watch Drax uh, 10, uh, 10 and one. I think that was gonna, that's gonna be cool. I gotta watch that. Did you see that Gary had an espresso just for you, Joe, before the show? No, <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah. I haven't watched it yet because we got back late last night and I didn't have a chance. Now here's Dave Draggy. Now, Dave, I met Dave last year down here. He lives in the building across the street during the summertime. He lives from New Jersey, nice. and um, he is putting together a terrific project. So I immediately told him, hey, Dave, when the project is done, let's do videos on it. It's just <laughs> so interesting. I've got some parts of it already. So stay tuned, as Jerry the Jitterbug says. Good to see you, Dave. Thank you for stopping by. Let's see, who else? Anybody else we have here? David O'Leary. David, good evening to you. Thank you for stopping by. Appreciate you. Hope we make it worth your while. All right. So before we begin, I just want to remind everybody that we do have um, channel membership. And you probably see something that says join or whatever else that's there. And the channel membership is basically $1.99 a month. All right. And I understand it's it's for some people it's not worthwhile, but it's only $1.99 a month. When I collect the money, I give it to two different charities. And I wanted to bring one of them up if I can uh oops, hold on a second, if I can have done this beforehand, but I did not. So there you go. Let me share the screen. All right. One of the two charities is okay, where are you? Stream yard. So many buttons you gotta push for this. It should be easier. One of them is St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Now, I've done some uh, mystery boxes for, for uh, charity, and St. Jude's was the first one I did a couple of years ago. And the key here is that St. Jude's is a research hospital for children with cancer. The key is families never receive a bill from St. Jude for treatment, for them traveling, for staying with their kids. It's just an amazing, amazing organization. But the only reason they can do that is because they get donations from people, you know? And what they try to do is to really come up with the cure for a lot of these children. And if you go to their website, you'll see some adults that have actually gone to St. Jude as children and been cured of their cancer. As you see here in the U.S., four out of five children survive cancer. But in many countries, only one out of five survive. And so they're actually expanding now to beyond the United States to try to help these other children that are here. And their goal is to cure at least 60% of children with six of the most common kinds of cancer worldwide, all right? And they can only do that, and look at these kids. I mean, can you imagine being a child and being the parent even of a child and your child is diagnosed with cancer? I mean, there are videos here, there are things there. I, I tell you to take a look at it. If you join the, um, the channel, uh, half of the money we collect will go to St. Jude's Hospital um, Research Hospital for Children. And it's just something that, you know, and if you don't want to join, that's fine. But maybe go to the website, take a look at it and think about, you know, throwing them a five, bu five bucks or ten bucks. It's just really, really or more. something that, you know, you should really consider. Now, one thing before we go on then with the show, let me um, do one other thing. Uh, stop that, do this, do this. 
I'm trying, I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this than the way I'm doing it. <laughs> All right. I want to acknowledge our channel members. Okay. So here are our channel members. Tina was the very fir first. Tina and um, Dead Men from England were the very first two channel members. I want to thank you guys. Mark Andrews is here. Thank you, Mark. Chuck Enzi also. Thank you, Chuck. Trev, the shipping guru. Gary B, casual comics guy. Filtastic Comics and Art. Brian LCS. Naman, a comic bookworm. Richard Veith, pretty fly for a Filipino guy. Rob's Fat Stacks of Comics. Cliff on Comics. And Cliff, if you're watching this on replay, because I don't see you in here, we're definitely going to see you up in Hudson Valley at the comic book shop up there when I get back to New York. Okay. All right. Uh, we have Milt Miller, Dave Draghi, my pal who I just talked about, Mike Evil's Comics, and Sleepy Reader 666, a great guy who reached out to me and was very interested in what we were doing here. So again, if you're thinking about it, you know, $1.99, it's not a lot. If you think you can swing it, I really would appreciate you considering membership. And I give away stuff. Matter of fact, um, here's the next giveaway. It's in this box. It's small, which means it's really exciting. So I'm going to do a little video for members only so you can see what it's going to be. All right. And, um, you know, so with that, I just want to, oh, I see Phil. Hey, Phil. I know. Great. You have a great family. That's important. It's the most important thing. And thanks for being a member. I really appreciate it. All right. With that being said, okay, uh, we're here to talk about the marketplace, you know? So, Alan, I yeah, guess I, the driver of this. Oh, know? yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm so excited I'm, to talk I mean, about this topic. some pretty good ideas. So I'm going to take a pencil and piece <laughs> of paper. And I'm going to write down some notes because there's some comics I want. And I'm going to find out how to get them on the cheap, right? Yes, no. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, right. So I wanted to, to, to preface this about two years ago, uh, in like the first couple episodes of the comic book crowd, we, we kind of took a pulse on the comic book market, right? How we felt like in the, in the 2022 timeframe, we're kind of on the edge of like that huge peak of comic books kind of being very expensive. The whole market of anything that had to be comic book related was kind of exploding. So we wanted to take like this opportunity like two years later to kind of take that pulse again to see how either the secondary market would be how comic books in general are maybe even talk about things that are comic book related but not necessarily comic books so we kind of are taking a different approach about um where the market is and you know possibly find some books on the cheap how we would do that like where we would look and like what we're looking for so kind of that's where where we kind of are. But, um, you know, I'm just going to open this up to, to the group and kind of let's just let's kind of go in this order. I know you I know you're raving to, to get there, uh, Mr. Mark Woods, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> let's start off with, with Chuck. Mark Woods comics. Let's let's start off with Chuck. What are, what are your thoughts on how the comic book market is right now? Well, I, I think, you know, it. I, I tend to look, as people know, for slightly oddball books and whatnot. And what's been kind of interesting is watching this interest in Bronze Age horror mm -hmm. go from just DC Bronze Age horror to now all of a sudden starting to branch into the Marvel reprints, which, you know, used to just be garbage. I mean, no, nobody wanted them. And, you know, it's starting to bleed a little bit now into Charlton and some other Bronze Age horror. Not as much, but we're starting to see a little bit of that, which has just re really fascinated me. And as Jerry says, there are definitely deals out there for a lot of these books mm -hmm. um, because you know, people either don't know about them or they're not interested in them or, you know, they're just kind of lying around. Um, the other thing in the market that has pleasantly surprised me, even though I did not get in on these. I've loved the artist for ages, but I didn't actually scour out all his books is the love of Dave Stevens, yeah. which mm -hmm. has just gone meteoric. And, but outside of that, again, I think as Jerry's saying there, it, it's a buyer's market in a lot of other areas. But yeah. those areas right now seem to be, because when I go to local cons here, those are the two things that people are saying they're selling out of. 
They're selling out of all Bronze Age horror uh, if it's priced fairly, uh, you know, reasonably, and they can't keep Dave Stevens covers. Well, Dave Stevens covers it. When I, I went to a small con up here, and um, you know, they had a couple of Dave Stevens there, and I managed to get one that was raw. But but they but people are asking for a little bit of a premium, I think, on yeah. on the uh, on the really good you know yeah. uh, good girl kind of covers that he has. Uh, they're all so terrific, but it seems after that, uh, or was it Chuck? Was it was it on Netflix that um, it was on, it was on, on uh, Amazon Prime? Amazon Prime. Yeah, it was on yeah. Amazon Prime, and you know, and stuff like the Airboy book there, which Matt is holding up, gorgeous, gorgeous book. Mm -hmm. You know, those more common ones, you can still get them raw at a decent price. Right. Yeah, but some of the more obscure stuff, like um, the Space Vixens 3D. Um, some of the um, adult books he did, yeah. uh, some of those things, those are starting to go for a little bit more money because just people either don't know about them or they just can't, they can't find them. I mean, you know, so yes. And the planet, of course, obviously yeah. planet comes one, which yeah. this yeah. is one that, that I saw there. I think, yeah, yeah. I think is it was something like, saver, a, Joe? excuse me. Is that your screensaver? Uh, well, it's my, it's my close. Well, right yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I showed it to this guy cause he had it there. I think it was a 7.5 and I just thought it wasn't a bad price, but it was a little bit higher than I wanted to pay. Yeah. And he really wouldn't come down on it cause he knew he had something that people wanted, but that's one that I've been looking for. I, I'd buy it raw if I could find it at a, at a decent price. But uh, but that was one that was there, and you know it's just so really good. But did you mention the Charlton thing? And I, what I've seen is that now, especially online, I haven't seen much Charlton horror, you know, in kind of these small cons and things that I've gone to. But um, online, it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like those prices are now going up as well. I mean, I see them kind of. I'm saying myself, what? You know, even books that I've never heard of before. If it's a Charlton horror book, suddenly they want, you know, what I think is real cash for something that yeah. maybe like a year ago you can get for like ten dollars or something. Now you see it forty five, fifty, sixty dollars. Wow. You know. Well, I think people are starting to realize that you have people like uh, Aparo and Stanton and uh, Ditko and a bunch of these guys who did those covers, and if you want to get a nice Ditko horror cover you can drop a lot of money on a Dr. Strange, which or, is going to cost you a lot of money because this is a Dr. Strange, or yeah. you can get a ghostly tales or a haunted at, you know, a third of the price. Now the problem of course is trying to find a Charlton book in nice shape. Yes. You know, in, in <laughs> higher grade or, or just find it period. So, you know, there's, there's, there's the other half of that equation there. So. I have a, I have a question for you, Chuck. Um, yeah. Compared to two years ago to now, do you think there's more popularity in those types of books because more time has passed and more people are kind of learning more about comics in general? Or have you, do you has it been kind of the same, the same people looking for the same books? I think you're starting to see more of an awareness of it. And it, it strikes me as people kind of moving from the pre-code horror where, you know, you had that around 2016, 2017, People start rediscovering horror books mm -hmm. and horror covers. And then when yeah. they all got priced out of that, they went, oh, my God, there's rights and artwork. There's, you know, Neil Adams. There's, you know, Nick Carty, right, all the great DC stuff. And I think as we're seeing that market starting to get priced out, they're looking to say, well, where's some other great, nice looking, great horror looking stuff? But I, Alan, I don't think it's to the point where it's going crazy, crazy yet. I think it's uh, it, the Marvel's getting starting to get a little crazier than I would think it would be. But I think mm -hmm. you're starting to see an interest in it and people sort of discovering it and finding out what's there. So, yeah, I'm only used to like you know those Chamber of Chills types covers, but then mm -hmm. the last couple of years, the more I've learned, like sometimes I need to stop looking at the spandex superhero type stuff, so I kind of yeah. switch to like checking out more of the horror books and there's that, like, you know, there's that mm -hmm. ebb and flow for me at least. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But Hey guys, I have to make a little shout out here. My little eight, eight year old student is in the chat. Okay. She's under her mother's um, 
uh, profile under Tony, but Delilah, it is so glad to see you here, kiddo. But <laughs> glad you're watching today. There we go. Hey, there you go. All right, now we all got to clean it up. So, so much okay. for showing those, uh, those covers. <laughs> Anyways, okay. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. All right, this <laughs> maybe maybe it's a good time to switch switch up to to Mark, <laughs> the real Mark. What are, what are, what are your thoughts about the comic book industry the last couple of years? Um, I'm I've been around a long time in this hobby, like before it was like all this speculation. Like I have one of the very first Overstreet price guides, but. Like I have, because, awesome. and that was novel. That was like, what is this? Because this is for comics, right? And people are doing this like, oh, we're, there's too many books. The prices are falling. The whole market's going to crash. Everything's coming to an end. And and there's a lot of gloom and doom. And, and I have seen the market do that. And I've seen comics do that. And, you know, like we forget how long this method of media has been around like the eight first comic was in 1837 like that's the first one and i wasn't there mark neither I was, was I. I, was <laughs> right now. I was waiting for that joke yeah. I, was oh, man, for I know I'm looking in matt woods eyes and i'm saying yeah, I'm I, saw the it. I was getting ready and i know this will shock you and it wasn't printed in the united states until two years after that like it would the first comic book was in other languages hmm. Printed wow. in Europe, mm -hmm. and it was printed in in Europe. So it was in uh, German and French. It was in English, but English English, not American English. So I could read it. And then, uh, <laughs> what, what was it in Canadian English? Because it's we a all yield know. tale. <laughs> Were there enough A's in there? Uh, you know. there? Yeah. So. <laughs> I know that the market is fluctuating and we're seeing books like scream out of reach. Like I think there's a there's a Superman book right now uh, that's in that's in the middle of an auction. I'm trying to remember what its last bid was. I saw it yesterday or the day before and it's like at four some million. Like it's it, it's now turned into consortium buying. But what with what Chuck said really actually feeds on that because like here's like here's a, a Carlton book, Carlton book, mm -hmm. like you know classic Monster Hunters. It's issue number seven, right? Um, it's a cool cover, and if you can see that right there, it cost me five bucks. Yeah, wow, Canadian. Oh, two weeks ago. So that's like giving that's away, awesome. isn't it? <laughs> so what's I cool is Canadian money. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not even getting into that, but it's <laughs> prices go up and down and they fluctuate and people say that's the like, you know, like we're really worried about the industry and we're worried about books. But I was doing some 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 looking and like uh, the man, the largest manufacturers of comics in the in the world is Disney. I know that shocks you guys. And they've been doing comics since like the early 1930s yeah. uh, the next is warner brothers dc and we know when how when they started right um image has only been around since 92 idw since 98 boom since 2005 and then the next highest selling books are our publishers are all from japan yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. and their their comic industry and books are screaming off the shelves of how fast they're going, right? And and you see some of those prices, and you see it's a different way of collecting, and it's a different way of investing. So when you look at how long this this hobby has been around, and how long people are, uh, you know, th this whole investment thing is really only since about 1972 is when the first Overstreet came up, yeah. right? So. When you think think about that in the big picture, like Joe and I were were like Joe was was doing stuff that he probably can't talk about, especially if we have one of Matt's kids watching, and and I was still like, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it isn't that old, and we're still trying to fluctuate the market, and every time you get a commodity like, 
Action Comics, uh, number one, like first appearance of Batman, yeah. first appearance yeah. of Spider Man, Amazing Fantasy 15. Every time you get a commodity that is very limited in number and is desired, the price goes up. And you always see people look for something else to fill the void. And to Chuck's point, their voids are being filled by different titles. I mean, look at, at the books behind me. Like, you know, those books, I bought a bunch of those books many years ago and some I just I have picked up throughout my hobby collecting period. And those books used to be really, really inexpensive. But yeah. the one that my finger's on right now, Chuck, what's Good that morning. going for? Uh, that's going for quite a bit of money. Yes, that, yeah. that that's a nice book. Tell what that is. That's Green, Green Hornet, Hornet number one. Hornet. Green Hornet number one, <laughs> with with a Bruce Lee cover. Yep. Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee on the cover. I just so, was looking at that, and it was kind of expensive. You know, it wasn't yeah. in my like. <laughs> not that I couldn't afford it, but I said, eh, you know, it I better put the money somewhere else. But put the money somewhere else. But that's what I. The beauty of this this hobby is. People say, well, I'm, a, I'm priced out of it. But you might be priced out of buying an Amazing Fantasy 15. Oh, yeah. Right. But collectors and people who are buying the, the comics down the road, like I was doing some uh, looking, and the top title sold for uh, 2023 was a Chip uh, Sadarsky Batman 131. Wow. And 2023. Brand new book. Now... Going back to Chuck's point about the horror books, those books were hot and fun when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I won't say how much younger because, again, Matt would be leaping on me like a great white shark to blood. Anyway, <laughs> I'm much younger than you guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> that book, those books that are the top 10 sellers of 2023, for the people who are young right now who are, who are buying those books, 20 years from now, those are the books they'll be looking for because it's nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. And the investment aspect of it may not be what it is that we saw during COVID, but you're still going to see prices going up for nostalgia. You're going to see prices for books that people went, I remember that title. It's like Joe and I trying to find this like uh, Doc Savage books. Yeah. Watch that's the next Espresso mail call. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. But so you know that's what's interesting. You know what's interesting and what you guys kind of got me back into from a nostalgia standpoint, because I was never nostalgic. And when I was young, I mean, I used to see these horror books that were up there, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't do anything for me. I mean, it wasn't something that I said, oh, like amazing fantasy, yep. amazing adult fantasy, mm -hmm. you know, before number 15. There were, I still have number 10 that I, must, that I think I got for free at the local, you know, bookstore. And why didn't you give me 15 is what I always ask, but I got 10 for free. I have a feeling you had 15, and that was one of the ones you threw away. <laughs> I threw it away. Oh, no. Hopefully that wasn't the case. But First appearance this, of just even from the 70s now, a nostalgia thing that's kind of started yeah. to hit me, based on what you guys have been doing on the Espresso Mail Call, is the TV shows. I see you've yeah. got Happy Days there. You've got yeah. uh, the Hill Beverly Hillbillies, Dark Shadows. You know, And so for me... I've started to when I go around, if I find one, I've got I've started to collect some of the man from Uncle ones because I used to yeah. love that show. So yeah. I've got two or three of them. No. Now, I don't think I'm gonna get right there. The yeah. whole thing, right. You know, but, but, yeah. but now what if I see one, especially for a few dollars, because you can still get those for a few dollars. You and can. they're you know reasonably yeah. good shape. Yeah. And if oh, you can yeah. and if you can get into uh, with some of the people who are still with us or for some of these books, not, I mean, these, some of like the happy days, there's still lots of the people around. You yeah. start to get into that signature series, right? Yeah. To get, you know, like, you know, if you can get Henry Winkler to sign a happy days book, you know, and then get it graded and verified, it becomes more, even more valuable than just purely the nostalgia. Yeah. And sure. then it becomes more collectible, and then more people want it. More people go, "Oh, that's kind of." So interesting. I have an A team. You think if I get um, Mr. T to sign that, that would be more valuable? Absolutely, it would. <laughs> it, it would. It it doesn't like it. I can guarantee you that if you get if you get that signed by someone, someone else will go. That's unique and that's different, and I and I want it. It's the same reason that um, you know things. Sad like Dave Stevens is a good example. Sadly. I don't know if Dave Stevens' books would be so popular if we hadn't lost them. Yeah. So, so for Mr. T, 
for people who don't know. Uh, <laughs> what you got to do is not just sign it, but he's got to say, pity the fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pity the fool. Pity the fool. <laughs> Oh, and Seth, Seth, we need to talk about Seth because, like, he's getting the, the, yeah, no, no. These are the opposite, Seth. <laughs> yeah, let, let's you know. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, so um, no, that that's that's really interesting. So, like the 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 books or the market, I guess, is do you, do you think in general we're kind of hitting a a lull, or do you oh, yeah. think we're yeah? Oh, I I fully believe we're hitting a lull, but I also look at what's what's going on in the world right now. We're in a recession. I can guarantee you, like when we were all going through the the gas crisis before you got some of you folks who were watching and maybe were on the planet, we weren't spending money on comic books. We were lining up at gas stations because to try to get enough fuel to be able to go to work. Like that's, that's the reason why I stopped collecting comic books in 72, 73. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. 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 And you look you at only put two dollars worth in, but then gas was about 35, 40 cents a gallon. So you can put two dollars in. So you had four yeah. gallons you basically. You had to have a car gas. to go in to buy a comic book. You had to go back to the end of the line. So yeah. you weren't buying yeah. a comic book at the you, time. You weren't, you weren't buying. And today people are going, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to buy? Uh, gas? Am I going to buy food? Am I going to do this? Or do I think I'm going to invest a million point, you know, $1.4 million on a comic book? So <laughs> that's true. That's so true. So when things change, which this I always have done this, and I'm not trying to be like head in the sand and think it's great, but it's, you know, hopefully it will rebound. Is it going to get to COVID prices? I don't think so. Someday. That, that for me was an anomaly. Like I, being in the hobby this long, I was sitting there going, "What is going on?" Exactly. Yeah. Like this is, and there were so many brand new people who found the hobby that that were spending money and slabbing everything. Like it was, it was insane. People slabbed yeah. books that you were going, "What? Why, Why are you slabbing? Like spending, you know, fifty bucks to slab a book that's a dollar ninety nine." This is true. This is true. I, I, I have to oh, I have to give a kind of sad story about that because so <laughs> oh man. During like I started in 2018, but I bought a big book in I think 2022 time frame, uh Strange Tales 110. Uh, mm -hmm. uh Doctor Strange. I looked at the price of that book as it is today, it's probably half. I bought a low grade copy of it and it just hurt my heart to see that book at half the price. And I could have been, I could have bought two of them today <laughs> for the price of one a couple of years ago. So it, it definitely is in a different place. Yeah. Like I bought blue Marvel number one at 9.6 for like something like $450. And then with, with the, you know, some of the thought was that he was going to be in the, uh, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier yeah. thing, something else like that. Yeah. And suddenly it was like $1,250. And I haven't looked at it recently, but I looked at it maybe about four months ago and it was like about the same price that I paid for it. So, oh. I mean, if you look yeah. at it for an investment, you know, I bought that book because I wanted to. But then you know you kind of get fooled by looking at the looking at the at the chart, if you will, you know, what's yeah. there. And you know, new people coming in don't necessarily understand, you know, what Mark is saying, that you go through ebbs and flow, just like um, just like the stock market, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 so you see something because of a rumor or you know, something like that, you see a, a shoot up in in price for a particular book, and you think that that's the way it's going to go. And it never goes that way. It just never mm -hmm. does. So you have certain blue chips, you know, yep. but most of those are really beyond most people being able to buy them. You know, and even a Hulk 181 in decent shape is a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know, a lot. and, and I, I give a lot of, you know, credit to people who uh, this one guy says, yeah, I'm going to collect uh, all of the original Hulk one to six. And he's slowly but surely buying them. He's got to be spending a ton of money on those, mm -hmm. a ton of yeah. money. 
And I could never justify that in my mind, you know. With well, that's the thing. I can't justify, like, I have a hard time wrapping my head around, like, you know, if you're single and it's your money and you're all by yourself, knock yourself out. Go crazy. Right. But most of us have others that kind of expect us to help with the household and help with the family and help with the kids. And I, unless I won a lottery, I can't. And even then, I don't think I could sink that much money into a blue chip comic book. Because yeah. to me, it's never been an investment. It's always just been a right. comic book. Right. For well, yeah. Listen, I haven't had, I'm known for talking a lot. And Mark, you just hit me on for a great segue. Okay. <laughs> talking about comic books as an investment. Now, honestly, if you're trying to ever get rich off comic books, you're, you're playing a fool's game. But, <laughs> but, but, I have sunk a decent amount of money into my comic book collection mm -hmm. over the years. But listen, guys, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I will not throw money away to just throw it away. I'm not buying a comic book. And spending a decent, I mean, if it's just a reader and it's a $3 comic book and I love reading and I just want to put it in a bag and board and display because I really like it, that's cool. Because I haven't paid well over $1,000 for some books, okay? Not a, not a crazy amount of books, but I mean a solid number. I would never throw that kind of money because I, you know, I have a wife, I had a kid, or I still have a kid, but um, I would never throw that kind of money away. If I did not believe that I could get something back for it, or at least, or at the very least, just break even. Guys, right now, I have been selling books. Okay, I've got a, I probably have another 30, 40 of them listed up on Shortbox. And I've probably sold about 30 or 40 already. Speaking of Hulk 181, somebody mentioned that that's a pretty big book. I, I had a chance to sell one of those. And the thing is, I told you I put a lot of money out into it. Well, I'm getting that same money back even in this down market. Um, I don't like talk numbers, but I I bought that that Hulk book, okay? And it was a gift for me, but it was one of those gifts where I ended up paying for it myself. If that, if, if anyone has ever been there, okay, here you go. But in the next month, I see I got a bill. But anyhow. Um, I doubled my money from 2020 to 2024 on that exact same Hulk 181, which is the first appearance of the Wolverine for Delilah. If you don't know that, Wolverine's really cool. The X-Men, have your mother tell you to watch the X-Men movies. They're great. Anyhow, so, but I will absolutely say this. I remember, remember having a conversation in 2021 I'm like, I want to sell every single one of my comic books. I want to sell every single one. I want to put all that money into CDs or some interest gaining account. And there's going to be a time in a few years, whenever the, the bottom drops out of the market. And I'm going to take that same money that I sold as exact same comic books for. And I'm going to write down each and every single book, what its grade was. And I'm going to rebuy them. And I'm going to make a profit of it off mm -hmm. of it and then maybe buy an AF15 whenever I'm doing it. Yeah, I didn't do that. So <laughs> it's these hard. books that I am selling now, guys, I am telling you, I some of these books are going for half price compared to what they were two years ago. That's kind of humbling because I'm kind of forced to sell some of them now. Okay. I got some life issues going on. And it's honestly a good thing. There's a reason I was willing to put money into comic books. One, it's a hobby I really, truly enjoy. But I also knew that if ever need be, I could pull that same money out and, you know, either make a profit or at least break even. And I say I'm still making a profit. Mm. That's good. That's good. But yeah, the secondary market, this is a buyer's market. I get low mm -hmm. ball prices offered to me all the time, like insultingly low low ball offers and i'm like i bet you somebody like bites on these offers whenever people put them out See, but what's the reference point matt you know yeah because i've heard people say it's a buyer's market jerry says it's a buyer's market what's the reference point for it mm -hmm. because I, it, you know is it 2019 we're looking at because are, are we always looking at pre-covid stuff to see that's the real price and now it's under that i mean I, i'm just asking because i don't know because for me, question. being anachro being an anachronist and set back in the 60s and 70s, um, 
you know, for Hooray. me, it's a seller's market because I bought those books for 10 and 12 cents. And I'll I can give you a, a great money. example. Okay. Um, 2020, I got that Hulk 181. Okay. Double the de, double de price on it since 20. It was May of 2021. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it was May because it was it was a Father's Day gift, but I got it in May. But anyhow, double the price on that particular book. But you got to realize that book itself, you know, everybody wants that book. That is a super high demand book. Look around. There's a little niche um, Spider-Man book. Okay. Uh, the second cover or cover B of Amazing Spider-Man 569. The first cover appearance of Anti-Venom. It's kind of a cool cover. Um, John Romita Jr. cover. But that book was going for really hot in 2021. I bought it then. I sold that book for about 60% of what its 2021 value was. So, Joe, to answer your question, I, I believe it really truly belong, or matters to the book. The blue keys, the first appearances of the major characters, they're staying solid. These little niche yeah. books, like mm -hmm. anti Venom's a cool character, but really... It's right. not a giant character. I wouldn't call Anti-Venom a blue key like I would Venom. So that one has tanked since 2021. Now, that might be about the same price as it was in 2019, though, Joe. So yeah. to give you that reference point, those books might be level. The blue key chips, they're still going up. Well, and I think Matt's got some some really good points there. And I, and I also want to mention, look, going to a couple of local cons here, that the dealers on their wall books – are still trying to figure out what they think the market looks like because mm -hmm. the wall books are all over the place. Um, they're either still at COVID height prices or, yes. you know, they're trying to guess, like I talk about the bronze age horror, for example, right. You know, they, they, they had a nice run DC Ghost, but mm -hmm. they were in you know, 6.0, 6.5 condition. He had 50 bucks slapped on every one of them. And you know, looked at me and said, Well, they're not selling. And I said, Well, yeah, that's because you got them priced 10 times higher than the market. That's why. I mean, okay. you know, but yeah. you know, the, I think at the cons, you can get some deals at the cons, but the things are still really, really priced at the old, old levels. And that's why they can't, that's why they're struggling to sell the wall books. But if you go to the cons, they'll tell you their $10 box, their $5 boxes, $10 boxes are getting cleaned out by people looking yep. to finish runs and stuff, you know. Yeah. Or or you got Mark Andrews and I sitting over there at the Dell Comet boxes, you know, scrolling through those, uh, you know. Fight, fighting over it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Chuck, did you see that guy? That's right. <laughs> but, but they have Dell Comet boxes now where they didn't have them four or five years ago. That's, and that's the difference. They're bringing them now. They're bringing them now. I'm seeing yeah. I'm seeing Dell. I'm seeing Car Carlton. I'm seeing, yeah. like, I'm seeing books. At cons and at shows that I would never used to see, you always, and you uh, are, yeah, and they're they're selling like crazy, yeah. and it's I I don't know if it's people going what is what is that I can't buy those over there but what's this is this going to lead me and and you don't know it I don't know why they're I know why I like to buy them it's just because it's nostalgia and it's and I'm not buying books to go man I'm going to be able to buy an island when I sell this right. <laughs> that's not why I buy, but I know there's people who are seriously still, even in this interesting climate, trying to buy books low and flip them high. And you just, you can't do it. Those, those are the speculators though. I mean, they're yep. not really the collectors. No. I mean, I always call like people like us, you know, accidental. So I call myself an accidental speculator. Yep. Not because I'm looking <laughs> to sell it, but like I buy a comic, then I look and say, "Oh, look, it's doubled in value or something yeah, like that." Yeah. You know, I don't always yeah. look at at values anyway. I mean, for for some big books, so I'll call big books which are not going to be really big to a lot of people, but to me, I try to I try to see if I could buy maybe one of them, you know, every year, something like that. But mm -hmm. for the most part, and you guys know me, but I mean, what I do is I take a look at some kind of niche thing that I really like. Like I I collected Doc Savage paperbacks, mm -hmm. which were the reprints of the 1930s pulp magazines. And so always had a soft spot for Doc Savage. I had some Marvel Doc Savage, had some DC Doc Savage, you know, and so I decided, okay, I'm going to collect, I'm going to try to finish up 
the Marvel Doc Savage and the and the uh, Doc Savage magazines. So to me, that's one of about four different areas that I look at. And yeah, and so generally those are not like thousand dollar books or anything like no. that. So for me, it's more like trying to find one that's in reasonable shape and to get what I need. And I know I could go out tomorrow. For example, I'm still missing on the, it's in, I, I just got, you know, I got uh, one of them, but I think I'm still missing Doc Savage number eight because at the New York Comic Con, for some reason, I had down, I need one to seven, thinking that it was a seven issue run, but it was an eight issue run. And so mm -hmm. eight was there. <laughs> a few dollars, but I didn't buy it. So I know I could buy it tomorrow. You know, I could just go on and buy it. I know it's there, yeah. but it's not significant that I say, oh, I got to have it. So I know I'll get it eventually and I'll finish that particular run that's there. You know, but you now I'm looking one more time, Joe. The, I got to have it. I got to have it. I film and put it on my next video. I got to <laughs> have, have it. it. I got to <laughs> have it. <laughs> <laughs> you think so? I've changed the way I look at things, and you're right, Mark. Some things are nostalgic for me. So that Doc Savage, yeah. in some ways, nostalgic to me. And I never read the full run, so I haven't still haven't read it. But when I get that number eight, I'm going to sit down and read the eight, through the and, eight, 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 and the uh, and the annual that's there. And, yeah. and to me, that's going to be cool. You know, it is. And that got to have. Do you think? Like I know that there's a lot of stuff, especially on on the Great Wide World YouTube that we're on right now. Um, there's been a lot of, because we had so much time during COVID, um, there's been a lot more channels, there's been a lot more interaction. I mean, that's how I got to know all you fine gentlemen. Yes, Matt, even you. And, um, <laughs> um, I, I know that that generated, like we, we heard about it, like, you know, fear of missing out and buyers, you know, like, oh, I, I yeah. got to get that exactly what I said. I got to get that book. In fact, it was Chuck's fault because I saw a book that I hadn't seen before that had Doc Savage and the shadow on it. That and I, I got to get that too. I got to get that one too. Well, mm -hmm. I got, I went ahead and got it and it's all his fault. But you got it before the you show was it. over. I know I got it That's before the show was over. <laughs> you need an intervention. I know. Anyway. I have it on my list now. And if I come across, I'd rather find it in the wild if I can, because I know I can go online and get it tomorrow. Yeah, I know, but I could only yeah. find one. That's why I went. And but you, see, I also my my market is a little more limited because I try to buy here, mm -hmm. because if I buy across the border, it's oh. it's it's we it's stupid because it's yeah. the exchange, yeah. it's the the import fees, it's the shipping. So my market is there's only forty million of us here. <laughs> so. And I know this will shock you. Not all of them are comic book readers. What? I know. All of these people. <laughs> you know what I need to do? Because I'm like a serious four a hour drive. I'm, a very, I'm, a, I'm a very nice, scenic, four-hour drive from Canada and from Toronto. So I need to go up and visit you, Mark. How far away are you from Toronto? This is like uh, eight hours. Four hours. Oh, it's only four hours from Toronto? Yeah, because they two-laned the highway finally. I've been waiting on that. Okay. Well, they they four-lane the highway <laughs> and they put big, big fences all the way up and down it to keep the moose out. So it's actually fairly safe now. You know, and because they didn't have the fence there, that is the only reason I've never come visit you, Mark. But the now we've now been telling you to come up to Comic Con. We've been telling you, Matt, so you should come this year. Well, we're gonna find we're gonna I find a place. Good. I think talking to um, a few people, Matt is one of them. We're gonna try to find a place where maybe we all can get together, you know. So we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're ruminating it. Right? Yeah. So Toronto would be a really cool place to go. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, Toronto would Toronto be fun. a cool city. <laughs> yeah, but it's still like it's about it's still about a nine hour drive for me. You know. I'll get, pick get, getting back to the topic at hand, though, it's interesting <laughs> to see. <laughs> to see <laughs> uh, we got we got someone in here commenting about the uh, some X Men stuff. I will tell you the X-Men 97, uh, the cartoon yes. has generated some interest yeah. in yep. the old, uh, the old, uh, the nineties X-Men run, yeah. which is, which has been, uh, just kind of fascinating to see. Um, I mean, again, there are a million, there are a million copies of those books out there, but, yep. uh, it's kind of fun seeing people getting excited about, um, Madeline Pryor and Mr. Sinister and, uh, you know, not exciting to see him get excited about the executioner, but you know, but all these crazy characters that I remember 
uh, from my, from, from collecting as a younger man. And that, you know, that that's kind of, that's kind of neat to see. And, you know, it, it's fascinating watching nineties books all of a sudden have value. When yep. We know how many were printed all the way up to, uh, you know, say 94 and 95, yeah. you know, then, you know, all of a sudden you get that big drop off, but watching the, the stuff that, you know, pre drop off, starting to move is kind of an impressive to see. So, yeah. And it goes to, I think it goes to what we've been talking about is a year ago or, well, no, go back. We'll back it up two years ago. Yeah. You could have bought any of those nineties X-Men books for in dollar bins. Yeah. yeah. You know, for the most part, like they, the, the, the right, filler yeah. books and stuff, because there were so many of them made and so many of them printed and, and and it is neat to watch that now, Chuck, because I, I watch the auctions and I watch the markets and stuff. And I'm, I'm going, really? That's you're paying that much for that, yeah. like, that book. And I think yeah. that's why the market is still I think this hobby is safe still. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Sorry, Joe, I, I cut you off. No, I guess there's a, I guess a couple of, a whole different show that we spoke about once a long time ago was getting new people into the market and the price of new books. You know, and I know that's kind of beyond what we're talking about here, the marketplace, kind of the secondary marketplace. But there, there are so many different influences now. We also had a show on the movies. Remember how do the movies affect yeah. everything? So when you take a look at X-Men 97, now I, I did the video like a few weeks ago. I posted mm -hmm. about the original X-Men, the animated series, because I had never seen it. You know, and I had that little quip, uh, Alan, that you had down about me saying I wasn't around in the 90s. That, that was kind of cute. <laughs> I would complain that I was around, but I don't even know you anymore, Joe. You didn't watch the, the, the Saturday morning X Men. Not movie. in the night. Not in not in the ninety. Not ninety two to ninety seven. I didn't watch him then. What my son was born in ninety two. My daughter in ninety six. I was otherwise engaged. Now I showed my sons those on videotapes. Matt, does that count? Oh wow! One hundred percent that counts. Okay, That's Mark. Because you know. That's cool. Yes, Martin I was in the courtroom. Joe, I, was that. I was in the courtroom. But for me, <laughs> when I watch the animated series, and I'm watching 97 now too, which I think is very good. But when I watched the animated series and I went through all of those things, I got involved in it and I said, oh, because I'd heard about a lot of these stories. Yeah. You know? We've got Alan like in collecting comics. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah, Alan, that's so I'd heard about these. And a lot of these characters I just knew in passing and at least I got to see them in an animated situation. So when I was um, at the, um, uh, there's kind of a used comic book store in the mall over here. So I went over there the other day to see what they might have preparing for the espresso mail call. But anyway, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I saw all these books there on Gambit and which I would normally have just kind of passed them by, you know? And um, and so I started looking at them and just look, I said, oh, you know, interesting, you know, started. I ref I refrained from buying, but it stopped me to look at them. Whereas in the past, I would have said, you know, okay, yeah, Gambit, who the hell is that? But now I had a little bit of an interest, at least mm -hmm. in seeing, you know, what was there and and how you know they might have presented them in the comic book. And if so I that's have no hair mask in the market now. Yeah, I know. But, it, I, but it won't in a few right years. Now, I'd be pulling it out, Mark. I'd be like just ripping it, listening to Joe talk sacrilege. Who's this Gambit <laughs> guy? What do you mean? <laughs> He's the greatest cage, Cajun ever. I used to take He's the greatest Cajun ever. I used to take playing cards and try to like whip them at my classmates like I was gambit. They were all they, they were didn't all explode into it. though. They didn't explode, did they? No. No, they did not explode. But it was still <laughs> like all of us. We were always trying to like throw these playing cards like Gambit was. <laughs> but that story, that whole this whole thing that we're talking about gives me hope that as we and like this market is okay. Because there's always going to be something. Yes. There is always yeah. going to be something. Like um, yeah. we were talking about modern books and the numbers. See, Brad, um, that yeah. sold like um, in 2021, The House of Slaughter, huge book. Every, you know, was a oh, big yeah. Yeah. They sold 341,000 copies of num issue one. Like, That's it? Yeah. That's just yeah, wild. That's a lot of That's... You think that's a lot of books. Yeah, it's a lot. Wait, isn't really? Image a uh, independent comic book company? Yeah. I yeah. don't think it's independent anymore. That's mainstream. No, it is yeah, mainstream. It is. Yeah. But just that in itself, and people were losing their mind, and they were getting it slabbed, and they were looking for copies and spending way more money. And you think, okay, why? And we'll see whatever happens with that. 
but like that the 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 X Men books, the reintroduction like that that them can't think of the issue, but the issue that has the trial of Magneto when he's standing it's with the shadows, right? And they put it right in the new cartoon. Yeah, yeah. Have you? Um, what I, I was looking at that issue number, and it's selling like crazy right now. Mm-hmm. Same with the first appearance of Madeline Pryor. It's 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 yep. kind of it's kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. I Just feel like call me Madeline Pryor. <laughs> I know. I was like, where did you get that yeah. name, lady? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's 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 kind of nuts because I I I do feel like with the introduction of X Men ninety seven, we we hit a big lull of where a lot of the movies and the shows didn't necessarily drive a lot of people back into comics and prices up. But I think this is because the story is both nostalgic for those who watched it in the nineties and the story is actually good. And it, they're actually making it. I like to tell my, my, my friends that this is, they're taking complex X-Men stories and making it more digestible, yes. making it more understandable. It's new. It's, it's fresh. It's different, but it's still like kind of, from the same uh, like kind of source material. And then so I think with good stories and nostalgia, you bring in the people who were there in the 90s plus new people. Uh, mm-hmm. But we haven't I don't think we've seen that in the last couple of years where, you know, the movies weren't necessarily driving prices back up. But I think now we're kind of seeing slightly a uh, sort of upswing right now. Yep, on some uncertain books. And that's the way it always has been. Yeah. Like. It's when somebody becomes known or it's a new hot thing. It's it's kind of like that, uh, sorry, that way, that Green Hornet book. Like, if it wasn't for that one gentleman on the cover of that book and his history and all of that, that yeah. would be a what show? And how many seasons was it on TV? Yeah. He was doing what? Yeah. And there would be absolutely zero interest. And there's always something like that within... And that's the other thing why I love some of these books. It's kind of cool. It's like these books were printed after the shows. Yes. These oh, are the show. result yeah. of the shows. These weren't because of the shows. Like, you yes. know, like so the movies are because of the comics that we are seeing today. The comics back in these days, they made the comics because of the shows to get people to buy comics and to go watch the show again. It's completely reversed. And the market <laughs> does cool stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's something like X Men ninety seven. You know, I think this, I think with movies, it's more anticipation. And for some of these series, I think for these animated series, this is just my impression. I think it's a little bit different. I think that the, if you want to say the X Men bump, X Men comic book bump, will is if this if this continues to be a good series. You know, I think those books will be up for at least a while, or at least as far as the series is going to be going. Mm-hmm. With the movies, you know, if the rumor is wrong, <laughs> the comic book bombs. You know, if yep. they're, even if the rumor is correct, after a while, it's going to start to kind of ease back down to its kind of natural spot. You know, so everything, everything when there's when you do something on rumor, you know. I can't wait to see all the Superman uh, comic books from these from the Silver Age shoot up when the new Superman movie comes out. Oh, it will. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's not going to happen. I don't think so. It's like the Madam Web, uh, Amazing Spider-Man first appearance of Madam Web. Yeah. Yeah. You Have you seen how much you can buy that book for right now? Like the old <laughs> type, no, type, no. Type, type, and oh my God, the movie's horrible. <laughs> Yeah. No one wants it. And Has it, anyone it, seen that movie, by the way? No. no. Nope. It looked nope. good to me. I hate to say it. Did you see it? You need your glasses on. Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, I haven't I, seen I, it yet. The trailer yet looked like it was interesting. I finally broke down and watched the Marvels this past weekend. You could watch. Yeah. Any good? And it, was fun. Fun. it was okay. You know what? Yeah. It was it was okay. It dragged a little bit in a few spots, but in a few I, spots, okay. I got up a few times and made like a coffee, and I still could hear it. But Mark, but Mark, if we had gotten that in the nineties, we would have been thrilled, and because that, was, that would have been you know outside of the Phantom and the Shadow, that would have been yep. light years. Absolutely, ahead of, 
anything we got. Yeah. And, and that's why I really still like the some of the very first Fantastic Four movies. Yeah. I like them. I do like too because I'm and the sure. and also I think that's why we love the first Superman movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that was a good movie, even yeah. compared to today's standards. It was it still did a great still job. Stands up, but you we you know like the byline to sell that or the the tagline to sell that movie was you will believe a man can fly as opposed to laying on a table like in the tv show gary just likes anything with women superheroes in it so you can't go well, by that, that's true yes. anyway <laughs> you know like I, and and they're always going to come out with something new i i hope that they like they they keep coming up with new ideas and i hope that they keep pumping out stories that are based upon comics um, and I like the fact that some comics now are starting to follow back. Like you'll see the movie specials, like they used to do that all the time. And they kind of stopped doing that. This whole genre is tied to entertainment. Like comics are to entertain us. Thank you. <laughs> and that's what they're supposed to do. And they're supposed to make us smile and laugh and think sometimes some of the great stories and tell stories that maybe we can't tell in other mediums. And if we make, a couple bucks along the side if we do that dirty word of selling something, which it's, I can't. Anyway. <laughs> this is not about the movies, but the first FF the movie, if they had somebody different playing Reed Richards, I think it would have, people would have liked it better. I thought that actor sucked. Probably. Yeah. But the, Mar- the Marvels, I, I it was okay. It was okay. But, but, you know, it's just like, I guess the part that I didn't like the most was that Captain Marvel was always serious, right? Yeah. And Ms. Marvel was like a, a real comic book character. And then they started full this flitting back and forth where they changed. And I was like, oh, what's going on? You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think they could have done that a little bit better. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my point, you know. Uh, I know yep. what they were going for. So it wasn't awful. I mean, but, you know. I'm glad I waited. There was a couple was plot on. points. Come on, Matt, that we're just going really like yeah. the, the cats that we're that's how we're solving this little problem. Come I mean, on. I haven't seen the movie yet, so <laughs> I, I don't know well, what such I, as I, it just too yeah. many marvels. <laughs> now, if, if if we want to do something to fix the comics market, part of what we can do is to get new releases that get people jazzed about going to get the back issue stuff. Yes. Yeah. And I think one thing that is hurting the market right now to a certain extent is that there is just not a particular series that is grabbing the collective zeitgeist of everyone. I yeah. mean, yeah. Uh, you know, Mark, Mark was, you were talking about the new Marvel's crossover this summer. I love vampires. Vampires are cool. I like vampires. Yeah. I am not buying 50 freaking issues of Marvel comics. No. With incomprehensible no. art. Nor am I going to go back and pick up the first appearances of this vampire, that vampire, this other character, whatever, because you have a 40, 50 issue crossover. Now, you give me two or three good books with good stories. And I've seen on Twitter people talking about how, oh, my goodness, I rediscovered the Jack of Hearts because he's in the the She-Hulk series where he's been a great supporting character. Where can I find more Jack of Hearts comics? Yeah. You know, again, four part it, series. It, that's that's right. Four, Bill Mantlo, four part series. Exactly. But you, it's that same idea of, you know, give me something good right now. And yes, I'll go back and I'll pick up House of Slaughter if yeah. what you're giving me is really good right now. I'll go back and look at Ice Cream Man. I will go back, you know, and get those things. But they've got to, they've got to be there to help sustain the market. So the market's not just being sustained by, do we like the Marvels? Do we think there are too many cats? Should yeah. they have been yeah. dancing and singing? Maybe they should have been reciting things in Shakespeare in English. Who knows? This is an even numbered Thor movie where we're all going to check out. I mean, really, come on. You yeah. know, <laughs> I, I I wholeheartedly agree with you, Chuck. I like, and I see, I see them attempting it, but then they, they'll go to a, a, like they came out with a new, one of the publishers came out with new Zorro books. Mm-hmm. Like who, who, besides perhaps all of us, but for Alan, even know <laughs> who the heck Zorro is? Yeah, yeah I, know Zorro. Zorro. I watched Zorro in the Wonderful World of Disney every yeah. Sunday night when they had the series mm-hmm. going. Yeah, so did I. And but and when I saw a brand new Zorro series coming out, I kind of went, 
really? Like, it like a new Tarzan series came out. Well, if you're like, they need to do something. You're right, Chuck. Find something that makes you go, "Who is that? What is that? It, where was where was that character from?" But also make it so it's somebody that some the the reading groups today, the populations today can relate to. And that's the trick. But the only way I think they can do that, and, and DC's been trying to do that with Batman on occasion, like they had the Batman in the shadow, whatever else, yeah. is to try to do something where these characters, you know, because I love the shadow and I and I love Doc Savage. Mm -hmm. But the question, and, and they they made different attempts to bring them back in different ways. But I think the key really is to try to somehow get them involved with the characters that people like, but have a good story. And 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 make yep. it so that you know that it's a ten issue run or it's a seven mm -hmm. issue run or something yes. like that. You like know, write the series before they start publishing. That's it. right. So that's right. So and and get a good story that you can do over seven issues or eight issues so that people get. I mean, it's like anything else. If you write a good story, there's a certain pattern you've got to follow. You yeah. know, so you can you can get the person interested in it to be to start reading it. You got to hook them in right away with some words and things that make some sense, and then you've got to build towards an ending so that people stay there. But I don't see that a lot. You know, I don't, and I, and I I don't know how you can get some of these characters in there, as you said, Chuck. So I'll say, hey, I this shadow and this was really good. I'm going to go back and get that 1973 12 issue series right. now. Because uh, this was so good, I want to see how it was back then, you know. Or I'll go back to the nineteen whatever forties and you know buy right. buy one buy one of those because I think it'd be kind of cool just to own one of them. I would do that, but I don't know anybody else that's collecting now that sees it in the same way. Well, I, the other thing is you've got to have LCSs. I mean, Grant, we all a lot of us buy stuff online, except for Mark who wants to keep his his loonies and loony. So you know. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's one thing for me to go and Google, you know, The Shadow on eBay and find access to Archie Comics and everything else, you know. But it, it's quite another thing to be able to walk into a store and deal with a store owner who you go, hey, uh, I read Batman in The Shadow and The Shadow seems really cool. Do you have any Shadow books? And the guy looks at it and he goes, we got Shadow of Batman. Yeah. And, yeah. and and you go, I, I don't think he knows what evil lurks in my heart. And they go, that's great. <laughs> Do you have any more shadow books? Uh, no. no. I, I think Dark Horse published something at one point in my life. And, you know, that also kind of gets in the way. Now, the advantage we do have today, which we did not have 25 years ago, or really 30 years ago, because 25 years ago we did have the internet, is we do have a market where we can go on now. We can go to Shortbox. We can go to eBay. We can mm -hmm. go to Heritage. We can go to Twitter. I've got a great guy on Twitter who I, I get stuff from some, you know, we can go to Instagram and, you know, type in shadow books and all of a sudden, you know, say, okay, do I want the Archie series? Do I want this series? Do I want this series? What, what do I want? You know? So. Like my LCS, the current LCS that I go to, uh, Randy has run that LCS for 35 years. Mm -hmm. When I walk in and say, Hey, Randy, he'll go, he knows all that stuff yeah and he, but he also knows all the current stuff because right. here's all the new books but yeah maybe back in the long boxes we may have something right um or he'll know somebody who has because he knows all the people who buy yeah i know someone who used to collect that i don't know if he has any of those he wants to sell yeah. that that aspect of of this market and collecting we have kind of wandered away from it i think which is is dangerous because we need to have those those memory banks i guess of how to find that without going on and it's really tricky but 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 mark a lot you know i i've been trying ever since i moved i i found this one store that was just really close to me but then during covid he ended up shutting down but he screwed up consistently oh, you know because yeah. he's a one-man operation with people trying to help him out and i tried to help him a little bit too but he screwed up consistently you know, and, and now I found one like in Connecticut that I go to every now and then when I'm up there. Um, and, you know, it, it, the, the thing is, you don't have those type of relationships 
that much no. anymore. I know Gary no. does with Rhino's comics up there. And he yeah. actually goes there and helps the guy out. And I wish I had a Rhino's comics, you know, near me or the one you're They're talking hard to find. Yeah, because yeah. I'd be there. I'd even maybe buy some new comics. But I'd be there yeah. kind of telling the guy, hey, this is what I'm looking for. I'm sure you give me a call to call you. And yeah. I think that would be just fun. It is. And, yeah. and I know that I'm spoiled and my, my, my LCS is a bit of a unicorn anymore. Um, because there's been other shops in town that have come and gone and just didn't last because they screwed up and they they didn't you know pay attention to that core group of people like me who are collectors and you know it, it's I wish we I wish they, we had more and maybe we'll get into brick and mortar but the it's a new world order and I don't think we'll probably ever be able to go back you can't uh, you can't go back you can't yeah it's hard to go back yeah 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 but Okay, I'm well, scared. I know that. <laughs> maybe we maybe we could just uh, bring this to a to a close. I guess. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because we resolved the issue, didn't we, Alan? Yeah, we, we always did. we always do. I, I noticed that in each of our each of our shows, we always resolve all of the issues. <laughs> no loose ends ever. <laughs> that twenty eight shows, twenty eight <laughs> issues resolved. It's just amazing. It is. Yeah. Amazing. Love yeah. it. I, I think we get a, a call from the federal government because they have some issues. Here that they need to resolve, and I think we can do it with a with a one hour and fifteen minutes. We're the show, think we tank. Uh, I think I'll pass on that one and let you guys hold, handle that one. On your own. <laughs> I want no part of that, Joe. Oh come on! Yeah. <laughs> no, but no, like it's it's been it's been such a such a whirlwind of the last couple of years of, and you you guys like all the audience members can see like how each of our experiences over the last couple of years have been slightly different, right? But we kind of have seen trends in the comic book market. And I, I do feel like every so often, hopefully this, this show goes on for years to come and we could we could do another check on the pulse another of, two, of the comic two book years market. From now? <laughs> yeah, maybe another two years from now. We can it is, mark it, it on your guys' calendars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this is a great show. Thanks for, thanks for like- Well, Alan, thanks for- show. Alan yeah. suggested it because we had, we did list, was it last month, was it? I was so busy down here. <laughs> I didn't have time to put together a show. <laughs> I told Alan and, and and Matt, why don't we do a retrospective of our first three shows? We each took one and made some cuts. And if you want to watch them, actually, they're pretty good. I watched them. Good. I, I, watch, watch I, them. I watched them. I yeah. watched them. They were the good. first three shows, they're mm -hmm. just, uh, what are they, about 20 minutes long a piece. We just yeah. took some cuts from each and kind of went through them. And and uh, it's kind of cool. So look for them. They're it's cool if you haven't, and then go back and watch the whole show because they, then I went back and watched a couple of them. They're really good shows and I'm bad. Yeah. You know? So, so uh, that's something you guys can do once we're done here tonight. <laughs> so let me thank everybody for showing up in the chat. We really appreciate you. Thanks for your support so much. Thank you again to the channel members. If you want to be a member, $1.99 a month, all the money I get goes to two great charities, St. Jude's Research Hospital for Children with Cancer and the Tunnel to Towers Foundation, you know? So again, Alan, thank you again. Chuck, you're just always fantastic wealth of knowledge. Mark, love having you on, my friend. And Matt, <laughs> you're, yeah. always, you're, always, you're always there to support you're always there. channel and me, and I really appreciate it. I'm there. I'm, I'm, you're, you're here, Matt. You're always there. You're always there. Right? Even though I wasn't there in the 90s. You were there. We're not sure it's you, Matt, but we're glad you're there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me <laughs> let me again thank uh, thank everybody for for showing up. I really appreciate it, guys. And um, I think that uh, let me see. I think we're basically done. All right, take care, and we'll see you next month. We're ruminating a pretty interesting uh, topic, I think, which you're all going to enjoy. All right. So see you at the end of next month for the next comic book crowd show. And don't forget, we're going to have an espresso mail call. And I'm looking for somebody to do the Anachronic College of Comic Book Knowledge for April. I've got somebody for um, May, uh, Brian LCS, but I need somebody for April. So if you're interested, drop me a DM on Instagram. It's at anachronic underscore comics. Let me know that you're interested in possibly winning some money for your favorite charity. And with that, I'll say good night to you all. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Night. -bye.